We are going to tackle a very important question in the guitar community. What's more important, the amp or the speaker? Let's do it. All right, guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name's Kyle, and what I do is I take awesome high-gain amps, guitars, cabs, speakers, overdrives, pickups, I record them with a simple SM57 setup, and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes who hate the taste of mouthwash, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button on the way out and subscribing so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right, guys, so I recently got in a KHE Audio Electronics amp and cab switching unit. I'm able to hook up four different amps and four different cabs to the same unit and switch between them simultaneously without connecting, disconnecting anything. So the reason that I tell you this is I was shooting a demo for the switcher and it kind of made me realize that I would finally be able to tackle a question that you guys ask me all the time really, really easily with everything that I already had set up. So I figured might as well go ahead and film this video. And that question being, which is more important in the overall equation of your tone? Is it the amp? or is it the cab and speaker? For a long time, I was honestly convinced that I thought that the amp was by far the most important part of the tonal equation and the cab speaker wasn't that important. Truthfully, that was born out of ignorance because I only owned a couple of vintage 30 cabs for a long time and didn't really have anything else to compare it to. And then when I finally did get another cab, it was a K100 loaded cab. And honestly, the K100s in the grand scheme of speakers don't really sound that different to vintage 30s. Of course, they have different EQs and everything else, but I've noticed that a lot of Celestian speakers kind of have a signature thing, much like Eminence speakers have a signature thing. And while there are definitely noticeable differences, it wasn't like crazy night and day going from the V30 to the K100, in my eyes, anyways. So fast forward a few years later, and I have come to the realization that the speaker makes a massive difference, the cabinet and enclosure makes a massive difference, because I have a ton of different vintage 30 loaded speaker cabinets, and they all sound very, very different. And on top of that, I have a couple of uh, different cabs where I have the same cab, but I have different speakers in multiple cabs. For instance, I have a Marshall Mode 4 cab loaded with G12 K100s. I've got a Marshall Mode 4 cab loaded with Vintage 30s, and I've got two different Marshall Mode 4 cabs. Yes, I have four of these cabs loaded with different Eminence speakers. And when you put all four of those cabs uh, together in the same room, they all sound really, really different, even though they are all technically the same dimensions, the same enclosure, same materials, yada, yada. So anyways, I always get asked the question, what do I think is more important in the overall tone equation? Is it the amp? Is it the cab? or the speaker. Well, I went ahead and I recorded a bunch of sound clips and threw them in a mix for you guys to listen to. That way, not only are you just hearing the guitar tracks as they are being changed from the amp and as they are being changed through different cabs and everything, but you're kind of seeing what difference it makes in the overall mix. So for this demo, I have four different amps and four different cabs. The four different amps are the EVH 5150, 50 watt stealth, the Omega Granifier loaded with EL34B power tubes, the Angle Powerball 2, and a Dietzel Herbert 50. And now for the cabinets, I have four different cabs and all four of those cabs, I will have a different speaker mic'd up. So I've got a Mesa oversized slant cab that has two V30s, but it also has two Omega DV77s and I will have an SM57 on the DV77. The second cab is an Omega 4x12 cab that I custom ordered from Omega. That cabinet has the Omega V12M 65 speakers in it. The third cabinet is an early 2000s angle straight cab that has vintage 30 speakers in it. And the fourth cabinet is an early 2000s Dietzel rear loaded vintage cab that I have installed to Celestian H30 anniversary speakers in the top, and that is the speaker that we will be miking. All four cabs have SM57s on them, and all four SM57s have been placed on the same spot on the speaker, which is 
at the edge of the dust cap where it meets the cone of the speaker. So same mic placement on all four different speakers. I have matched the volumes and tried to, you know, kind of get the amps in a similar tone ballpark as to basically how I would dial them if I was playing through them. So the four amps will kind of have some differences and everything. So let's go ahead, let's hear the amp differences first, and then I will come back, give you my thoughts, give you the cab differences, give you my thoughts on that as well. Okay guys, so listening through that comparison, here are my thoughts on the differences between the amps. Now the EVH 5150 just sits in a mix really well. Um, in my opinion, it was the most balanced. It had the least kind of spiky frequencies. 5150 amps in general are known for tracking really well. So wasn't really a surprise that that one sat great in the mix without really having to do much to it. So yeah, that one was nice and balanced and sounded really good as it sat. Next was the Omega Granifier. The Omega Granifier has a very modern and pronounced kind of uh, upper mid. It's not necessarily a spike. It's kind of like an up, a rounded upper mid frequency and as soon as that amp came on it was very noticeable the differences because it was like all of a sudden the amp was standing in front of the mix as opposed to kind of sitting right down in the mix so with some EQing and stuff of course you could kind of balance that out a little bit but overall I mean those mids are kind of always there no matter how you dial the granifier so um, it really wasn't surprising that it that it sat out front I've never tracked that in a mix before but the mids that you hear when you're playing it in the room are also very prominent when you track the amp so not really a surprise to hear what I heard there but overall it was tight punchy lots of clarity it did sound good it just needs a little work in order to sit in the mix a little bit better third was the Powerball 2 now the Powerball 2 actually I felt sat decently as well it had a bit too much like high-end spikiness and that's where I find uh, I really like the sound of that amp in general but it's hard to kind of balance that top end between being muffled and being too bright so again a little bit more work and I probably could have got it centered where I wanted the main thing that I noticed again was in the mids of that amp the mids of that amp are a little bit boxier they are probably the least prominent of all four of the amps that we are uh, listening to today but that's not to say that it sounds scoop because honestly in the room I, I was surprised at how much mids that the amp did have now it's more of a low mid focus than an upper mid but I feel like they're broad enough that the amp would sit nicely in a live mix or something like that and again maybe just a little bit more EQing to bring that high-end presence down and the amp would have sat in the mix a little bit better yeah I ran out of words there so you get what I'm getting at the fourth amp was the Dietzel Herbert now the Dietzel Herbert I feel is kind of a very mid forward amp but in a rounded mid type sense it's like all the mids are there not just a certain frequency up top not just a very low mid focus like the mids are very uh there they're very open and they're very balanced I'm actually kind of bummed that I sold this amp because I'm really digging it as I'm playing through it the last couple of days but uh yeah, overall, that one I felt like was the most relaxed on the top end frequencies. It had the most broad mids and that one sat in the mix very nicely as well. It did sit a little bit maybe out front more than the 5150 because there is just more mid content in general. But overall, I felt that that amp tracked nicely. There was honestly a noticeable difference going from amp one to amp two to amp three to amp four. Like I could I could pretty clearly pick out the differences uh, without really having to look at the track and see 
when the new amp was going to be placed or when the new amp was going to come into play. So yeah, the amp definitely does make a difference. I feel like there are a lot of people out there who try to tell you that the amp really isn't important and maybe the speaker cab is what you should be more focused on. I, I understand the sentiment, but the amp is definitely still very important. It is very important. And I feel that that track just kind of showcased the differences between them. Some of the differences are subtle. Some of the differences are not so subtle. With that being said, the cab and the speaker may make an even bigger difference. Let's go ahead and jump into the cab comparison and see what we think about that. Okay guys, so after listening to the cab portion, yeah, cab and speaker definitely makes more of a difference. There's no doubt about that in my mind. While the differences were noticeable between the different amps, the differences between the cabs were like night and day. It was almost like a, a shock to go from one speaker to the next and see how different they were. So in order, we started with the DV77 in the Mesa oversized slant cab. The DV77, in my opinion, seemed to be the most uh, kind of balanced. It really was just a very well-balanced speaker. It doesn't have any particular bright frequencies that kind of take over or any, you know, too much low end. There's no spiky frequencies that really poke through. It's very balanced and very well-rounded speaker. It sounded very, very full, which I actually really liked. And I think that pairing that speaker with something like a Vintage 30 for a future recording opportunity for myself would be a really good choice. Moving on to the VM1265 that was in the Omega cab. That speaker actually also sounded bigger, but it kind of had more of like a honky mid-range going on. Definitely seems like it would pair better with, a, with an amp that doesn't have as much mid content and overall needs a little help in the mids because I felt like the VM1265, the mids were very prominent, not in a uh, Vintage 30 type of way where they're very spiky and very sizzly. Uh, again, the VM1265 was kind of similar to the DV77, but just way more mids going on and in a broader spectrum. With the first two speakers, you can very much tell that they're Eminence speakers just by the way that they're voiced. There's, Eminence always kind of has this like hollow mid-range thing going on to them. But yeah, coming from Celestians, I've always kind of struggled to get along with the Eminence voicing a little bit, but in these two speakers, I actually think that they fill out really nicely. And uh, again, the DV77 is nice and full and balanced. Another thing I'll say is both of the Eminence speakers, both of the, you know, they're both Omega designed Eminence speakers are very full overall, whereas the Celestian offerings are very spiky in certain frequencies and but it's very noticeable going from the eminence speaker over to either the celestians because both the celestians were like very spiky in certain frequencies mostly in the high mids so you really can tell that which speakers are made by which manufacturers because they both kind of have their own signature things going on so that really brings me to cab three where i kind of already talked about the vintage 30 which was the angle uh, I believe the model is like the 412 Vintage, which it's anything but vintage. It's got a metal great front, it's front loaded, but it has Vintage 30 speakers in it. So that's probably where they got the name. But anyways, yeah, this was by far like the, the spikiest, I guess, in the frequencies. Like it just, it really uh, surprised me how thin overall the speaker sounded in that cab. Like it was really aggressive, but it just seemed like it was like a lot of upper mids and highs and not a lot else. It just kind of seemed like 
Uh, a lot of the other frequencies disappeared coming from the VM1265 over to the Vintage 30. Now again, in a mix situation, it's probably gonna be great because that's probably going to make the guitars nice and aggressive and kind of sit where they need to in that overall recording mix and poke through where they need to. But listening to it uh, back a little bit, I was uh, pretty surprised. I was pretty surprised at the difference in fullness and how many frequencies just kind of seemed to disappear as soon as we went to the Vintage 30. And finally, in the Diesel 4x12 cab, we had the H12 anniversary speaker mic'd up. And I was pretty presently surprised by how that speaker tracked. I actually was kind of a big fan of the tones that were coming out of that one. It, uh, it was like the Vintage 30, but it seemed to kind of have like a tighter low end and the mids, although they were still spiky, seemed a little bit rounder. And overall, I feel like it kind of punched through the mix a little bit better. It had a little bit more of a broad sound to it. So uh, I liked that speaker. I liked tracking with that speaker. It definitely was a more mid forward overall speaker than the Vintage 30, which I found surprising as I didn't have a lot of uh, personal experience with the G12H. 30 on its own. I kind of bought a bunch of those EVH uh, 212 cabs and ripped the speakers out so I could use those cabs for other speaker comparisons. But yeah, in, in listening directly to, shut up! In listening directly to the H30 under an SM57 mic, I was pleasantly surprised with how it tracked. And it was a very noticeable difference, again, going from the V30 over to the H30 speaker. So with all that being said, my conclusion is both parts matter a lot. But it's very clear that the speaker matters more than the amp now at this point because the differences between the amps were there and they were noticeable, but the differences between the speakers and the different cabinets were literally night and day. Like it was kind of crazy how much of a difference those speakers made. It, it sounded like you were listening to a completely different rig altogether when the only thing that was being changed out was the speaker and the cabinet enclosure. The mic was the same, the interface was the same, the guitar DI was the same. So I mean, everything on the front end was the same. The only difference was the cabin speaker and it was just like completely different tones. So my conclusion here is both parts matter. If you've got a junky, crappy amp that sounds poopy, uh, you can't get the saturation out of it. It doesn't react to your playing and it's kind of making you play worse. Oh boy, I keep forgetting to turn that volume down. Uh, no speaker is really gonna fix that. You know what I mean? Like no speaker is going to fix an amp that just sounds terrible. I have definitely had amps where I didn't love them, but finding the right speaker for them definitely kind of opened them up and made me appreciate them a lot more. But generally, if I don't like an amp, through a Vintage 30 or a G12K100 speakers that I'm very familiar with, I end up not liking it, period, and not liking how it records and everything else. So the amp absolutely does matter in my opinion, but the speaker matters much more. So if you have an amp that you like and it's not tracking quite right for you, try switching to a different cab, a different speaker, and seeing if that yields the results that you're after because more than likely those are gonna make a lot more of a difference than trying to change out a bunch of different amps through the same speaker. But yeah, that's gonna do it for me today, guys. I hope that you found this helpful. I really do think it is pretty eye-opening if you haven't really dove into this subject before and I hope that it helps you guys out. If you are interested in any of the speakers or the amps in the video that I've mentioned below, most of them can be found at Sweetwater and I have a Sweetwater affiliate link so if you want to support the channel you go down in my description you click that link you get one of these fine pieces of gear from Sweetwater it costs you nothing extra and I get a little kickback it would greatly be appreciated or you can be like one of these fine people right here and join my Patreon community where all of the donations to my Patreon account goes to funding new gear for the channel it greatly helps out as well and I would love you forever I'd love to have you on board so consider becoming a member of the Patreon also in the description are links to the belligerent amateur community including my Facebook group and Discord server Get down in the description, click those links, help me out, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again, and we'll see you next time.